Hey there, this is Doug from Elevation Media, uh, and we're going to go and shoot a quick test video using the DJI Osmo Mobile and the iPhone X. Uh, I'm hearing that maybe these two don't play too well with each other, so we're going to go out and shoot some video out in the open air, see what we can see on that, uh, and then report back. Okay, so why are we going and shooting some test video with the Osmo? So, if you don't know what the Osmo uh, Mobile is, uh, it's what they call a gimbal. Uh, and a gimbal is a kind of like stabilizer for a camera, so that you don't get that shake when you're shooting video. If you've ever seen any sort of behind the scenes um, of any sort of Hollywood movie, you usually see they have these sort of big stabilization rigs for holding cameras. That's how you get a nice clean shot on that. So the gimbal is meant to do that. Now, I don't shoot uh, movies for a living, so um, I don't need a camera stabilizer in most use cases, but I saw the mobile come out a couple years ago and I thought, oh, that's cool for people who shoot a lot of video. But it was never for me. Uh, however, uh, I'm going on a trip soon where we're gonna get a chance to do some dog sledding, and in doing the dog sledding, I thought, oh, how cool would it be to have sort of this low camera angle, kind of over the tops of the dogs, and it's really steady. Okay, well maybe I'll pick up one of these, these Osmos. So I go online, go to Amazon, um, look around. Uh, they got a refurbished one, it's $159. I don't care if it's scratched or dented, it's a, it's a gimbal. So I said, okay, I'll purchase it. So it arrived a little bit before Christmas, um, got too wrapped up with the holidays, uh, Christmas and New Year's went by, and then I unboxed it after that and started setting it up. The you know, setup was pretty straightforward. There were a couple little things I didn't figure out because I didn't read the manual uh, but I eventually got it working and was just kind of using it shooting stuff around my house and everything seemed to work just fine so I thought okay great all set ready to go on my trip got this thing it's gonna great me give me some great video and I started looking around online a little bit and it turns out there may be some problems with using something like the Osmo mobile um, or really any gimbal obviously that's supposed to stabilize things with iPhones or any phones really that have built-in image stabilizers. Apparently what happens is that these two start to conflict with each other. So you would think that, you know, if I've got a stabilizer with the Osmo and a stabilizer in the camera, I should have a really, really stable video. Unfortunately, what seems to happen is these two systems fight against each other and you get some very, very strange video artifacts. So some people will call it like a jelly, um, jitters, something like that. To me, it kind of looks like there's things way off in the background that are kind of like popping forward quickly for like a split second and then kind of going back to where they were. And it just, when you see it, you're like, yeah, that doesn't look good. So, um, so I decided I'm still in the return window. I really need to go and shoot some test video with this outdoors where I've got some things that are far away and see if it actually makes a difference. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do three things probably. I'm gonna shoot number one with the DJI Go included application um, at the highest frame rate, so 4K, 30 frames per second. I'm gonna shoot with the native built-in iPhone camera app, which can shoot at 4K, 60 frames per second. And then some people talk about there's a third-party app called Filmic in the App Store. Apparently you can sort of disable image stabilization. So I'm gonna try that, but this gets into point number two on this. There's some question about whether the stabilization is being done in software or done in hardware. And if it's being done in hardware, if there's little magnets or something, uh, little springs holding the lens in place, uh, software can't really work around that. There have even been some people that have gone and put magnets on the corner of their phone. This is not recommended. Um, in order to try to correct this, and it looks like it actually does kind of fix it. So, um, anyways, just gonna go shoot three straight videos, walk, you know, about a minute each, um, bring them back, mix them together, put them in a video, and we'll upload them for other people that might be considering this purchase. I am not a professional videographer, as you, if you haven't already been able to tell, you should be able to tell by the end of the video. I'm not terribly good at this, but uh, if it's helpful for some other people, we're gonna make a recording. Okay, so I've come to a nearby baseball field, 
and this gives me lots of sort of objects that are off in the distance um, and close by so we can kind of see if we get this popping kind of problem so the first video I'm gonna shoot here will be at 4k 30 frames per second directly out of the DJI go application all right I'm basically gonna try to do the same walk every single time I'm walking holding this so there might be a little bit of unsteadiness in it Try to recenter this with the double pull on the trigger because it seems like it's a little bit tilted on the horizon. thinking after this run, I'm gonna adjust the horizon calibration. That's something I didn't do at home in my house because it's a little bit harder without having something in the distance to look at. But if we're getting the video popping problem, we should be getting it even with tilted video. I'm not using the trigger lock to lock in a specific view. So this is sort of the, the free floating panning around you can just do by pointing it slightly different directions. All right, I've reached the end of the road literally. So I'm gonna stop here and restart again with the iPhone camera. All right. Now I'm shooting video at 4K, 60 frames per second, and this is being done with the native iPhone app, camera app. So I'm not using the DJI Go app, which means I lose some of the nice Bluetooth integrations, but the gimbal itself will still do its primary job, keep things level. Now, I should mention, since this is an iPhone 10. This has two camera lengths. It has sort of the wide camera length and then a more zoomed in camera length. I'm using the wide one currently. So in the camera screen, you'd see the 1X if you were looking at it from my view right now. Um, from what I understand, the image stabilization is on both cameras. So if it happens with one angle, it would probably happen with the other with the more zoomed in lens. So I'm not gonna run a second test just to check that one out. But I'm gonna try and get the same sort of stabilization and looking around at things. Just pointing the Osmo in different locations. For those of you who are thinking that video also looks a little bit tilted. I don't think Doug quite got his Horizon leveling right. Um, I'd say you're probably correct. It looks a little bit tilted to me here too. After I did the first video, it seemed like it seemed like it sort of corrected itself on that. So I didn't actually do a calibration like I said I was going to do. But maybe I should have done that. I'll try to do that maybe prior to the third video here. So again, I've kind of got the same views we had before of the park here, uh, the baseball diamonds. The question will be, once I get this home and on my laptop, can I see things kind of in the background that seem like they're really sort of popping forwards? What they call that sort of jello or micro jitters look. And I've hit the end of my road again. Okay, now I am shooting with the Filmic third party app from the app store. 
This one seems to be popular amongst people that shoot videos with their phones. I have to say, I do like the interface on it. It's pretty nice overall. And there is definitely a lot of customization that you can do with the app. Um, I'm running it kind of straight as is. I just got the app the other day. I haven't learned a whole lot about it yet, but there are two options that I did enable for this test run. The first, there is an option to have it connect to the Osmo Mobile. It knows how to integrate with that and send the Bluetooth commands. I confirmed that was working because as I started this walk, I simply hit the red button on the Osmo Mobile handle and the recording started in Filmic. So that gives me a good indication that that integration is working correctly. The other option is I turned off image stabilization within Filmic. Now we've already talked about the fact that there's questions on is there some being done in software? Is there some being done in hardware? Um, does that mean you can't really fully turn off image stabilization? You search here on YouTube, you look at some forum posts. There's a lot of opinions out there. I really don't know one way or the other. So I'm just trying to go and do this test for myself to see what gives me the best video results before I'm on my trip. And that's not when you want to be testing your camera. So I turned off whatever that image stabilization thing is. I turned on the gimbal integration, the Osmo Mobile in the hardware settings. And I set the maximum resolution to 4K, 60 frames per second in what they call Filmic Extreme. So I'm sure I'm chewing through my memory at warp speed right now. But this is the third and final test. All right, so I came out with the camera again to the same location. I'm gonna try and shoot this again, but I'm gonna try using the selfie camera this time because the selfie camera doesn't have the mechanical image stabilization. Uh, I looked on Apple's website, it does have auto image stabilization according to Apple, but that might be something different. So um, I'm gonna try and set this up so I can take video and see if we get a little bit better view. Okay, so we're in the same field now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically just try to grab the Osmo with my other hand and step around behind it, and then just walk forwards and see what we get in terms of views and video, and if it works any better. So I'm just sort of trying as best I can, so I apologize, the framing's probably not as good as last time, but basically all I'm doing is I'm using the Osmo with the selfie cam and just walking. Now, if I read the Apple page correctly, the iPhone 10 has a 7 megapixel uh, 1080 resolution uh, selfie cam, FaceTime cam, whatever they call it. And so a couple years ago, 1080 was about as good as it got, so maybe that's acceptable. Although the obvious drawback on doing it this way is I can't really easily see what's being videoed, unless I can sort of crane my head around in front of the camera a little bit. But that's obviously not gonna work for my use case where I wanna maybe get video of dog sledding dogs. But we're just gonna try it. We're gonna see what we get out of this. Bring it back home, bring it up on the computer again. Like I said, those first three videos just, just didn't look good. So um, I absolutely believe that there could potentially be a problem on this. If this video looks great, then I'm gonna say optical image stabilization is the culprit. The Osmo is pretty cool because you can do all sorts of other things like motion time lapses and some other neat stuff with it. So I might still keep it, but you know, we're just going to have to wait and see how this video turns out. So 
This is about the end of our walking path where we hit where uh, we hit the end of the road here each time. And so hopefully I'll change my grip back here. Hopefully that might have worked out as a better video, but we're just going to have to go home and see what happened.